Okay, so we're meeting a new critter now, and it's a cyclic hydrocarbon, and we call it benzene. They knew for a long time that benzene's formula was C6H6, and they considered the possibility that it was some kind of stick, like just hexane, but that didn't work out. It seemed to have more symmetry than that, and eventually some inspired work by uh, a chemist named Kekule determined that it's probably a ring structure, and C6H6 makes all kinds of sense if you have a hexagon of carbon atoms, and we'll link all that up, and if each carbon has exactly one hydrogen attached to it. That's nice and symmetric, and kind of snowflake shaped, rather pretty. What's the matter with this as I have it now? think about bonds. Carbons are supposed to have four bonds each, and yet these carbons each have only three, so there's got to be a little more to it than this. So after a little bit more work, they said, well, what if it does this? If this is true, this carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. This carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. They all have four bonds, so this is actually good. This makes perfect sense. Unfortunately, this isn't benzene either, because it's possible to measure the bond lengths in benzene, the distance between these carbon atoms, and what they found is that you don't have shorter bonds and longer bonds in benzene. They're all exactly the same length. So this 1, 2, 1, 2 thing can't be what's happening. And what they finally arrived at, what we think is happening in benzene, and this is a little odd, these bonds are not singles or doubles. Each of these bonds is like one and a half bonds. And this is one and a half bonds. Instead of one, two, one, two, it's just one and a half, one and a half all the way around. That's based on an idea that they call delocalized electrons, where instead of you having an electron pair just here, you have an electron pair that spends half its time in this area and half its time in this area. So it's contributing roughly half a bond here and half a bond on the other side. And so overall, that makes all of these bonds the same size and the same strength. And that explains why benzene behaves the way that it does. It's perfectly balanced all the way around, and all the bonds are indistinguishable, because we believe they're all one and a halves. So that's the structure of benzene. We give it its own symbol, because it's an important part of so many chemical species. And the symbol we give for it looks like a nut. It's a hexagon like you would do for cyclohexane. And then, if the double bond thing had been right, we'd be putting lines like this inside to show the double bonds. Instead, because those extra bonds are shared equally all the way around, we put a circle inside it to represent those extra electrons that are shared evenly around the ring. So this symbol is benzene. Now, ben you can have benzene by itself. You can have benzene with branches on it, and you can see those are going to come up right away. You can also have chains of other carbons and then have benzene attached onto them. So benzene can be a branch just like anything else. And you know that if you have a methyl group attached to something, or sorry, if you have methane attached to something as a branch, we'd call it a methyl group. Attach ethane to something, we call it an ethyl group, and so on. So it would make a lot of sense if a benzene attached to something were called a benzyl group. Sadly, that is not the case, and they made up a completely different name, and I apologize, I don't know how they came up with this. But if you have benzene as a branch on something else, they instead call it a phenyl group. So this thing would be 5 is pentane, this would be 2 phenyl pentane because you got a pentane and then on its second carbon there's a phenyl group attached. So this name's a bit vexing, but we'll get used to it. Let's see if we can name some things that have benzene in them. Okay, well they start easy. This is benzene. This, well, it's also benzene, but now it's got a branch on it, so there's going to be more to the name. This is a methyl group, so we can say methylbenzene, 
And what do you think of that? Should we say one methyl benzene? We actually don't need to because if you've only got one feature on a benzene, it's automatically going to be on carbon number one. So if you say one methyl benzene, everyone will understand you, but they'll also think, hmm, that one didn't need to be there. Here again, we have benzene as our primary. Now, this is a methyl group, so is this, so we're talking about dimethyl benzene. And if one of these is on carbon number one, you could count completely the wrong way and say this is 1,6-dimethyl benzene, but of course you'd rather go the shorter way, and so this would be 1,2-dimethyl benzene. And this, pretty similar thing, except now if this is carbon number one, this would be two and this would be three. This one is 1,3-dimethyl benzene. And this, 1, 2, 3, 4, would be 1, 4 dimethyl benzene. All right, what else have they got for us? Okay, benzene. And what do we have attached to it? This is a methyl group. Methyl starts with M. This is a propyl group. Propyl starts with P. And alphabetical order, M comes first. So this gets to be carbon number one. And so we would have one methyl. And then the shortest way is this way. If we go, this would be carbon number three. 1-methyl-3-propyl. 1-methyl-3-propyl benzene. Oh, what's going on with this? Here, this is not one that you'd want to start with the benzene, and the reason for that is you would then have You've got branches going in two different directions coming off the same carbon, and that's difficult to name. In fact, I'm not even sure how you would name that. So the way to handle this is to let this chain be your primary. This, we're going to use phenyl for the first time here. If this is our primary chain, and it contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 carbons, then the primary is nonane. and attached to the one, two, three, fourth carbon, we have a benzene, but when benzene is attached to something else, you remember what it's called? It's not a benzyl group, sadly, it's a phenyl group. So four phenyl, four phenyl nonane. For this, let's see. I believe there are two ways you could name this thing, depending what you con consider to be your primary. If the benzene is your primary, then we could say we have that, and then attached to it we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 7 is heptane, so this would be a heptyl group. And it's attached to carbon number 1, so you could call this 1-heptyl benzene. Or because you don't need to write the 1 when it's the only feature, you could just say heptyl benzene. Or if you consider this to be the primary, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you could say it's heptane. And attached to the first carbon, there is a phenyl group. One phenyl heptane. So it's funny. It's, it doesn't feel terrific to have two different names for something. But if, uh, if you look this thing up, here's heptyl benzene. 
and check this out. There really is not agreement, apparently, among chemists as to what to call this thing. This chemical is listed as heptylbenzene, and right next to that it's listed as 1-phenylheptane, so both names are technically valid. I thought there might be a rule where the if you have a tie like this, the bigger chain gets to be the primary, in which case it should be phenylheptane, but apparently that's not the case, and this really is kind of a gray area where we we don't have a clear rule that nails this down. Or maybe there is a clear rule and just nobody knows it isn't well publicized. So, sorry about this one, but I'm, I'm actually glad they brought it up. It's, it's good to know that for some of these, it's not the end of the world if two people come up with different names. If you think about these two carefully, you'll if you say this and another person says this and you both take a minute you'll realize you're talking about the same chemical happens sometimes despite our best efforts okay how about this well here we've got two branches coming off the same benzene so that makes it pretty clear benzene's the center of attention and should be our primary and attached to it we have a methyl group M for methyl, and then here we have a 1, 2, 3 would make this a propyl group, P for propyl. So alphabetical order, M comes first, so we have 1 methyl, and we want the lowest possible number for the next thing, so we'll go clockwise and say that's 2, phen sorry, not phenyl, propyl. 1 methyl, 2 propyl benzene. And a couple more. Benzene in the middle, of course. And what's attached to it? We have a methyl group, a methyl group, and another methyl group. So trimethyl. And where are they? Well, pick one of them to be carbon number one, and then if I go clockwise, then I get one, two, three, four, five. If I go clockwise, I get one, three, five, trimethylbenzene. If I go if I go counterclockwise, I get one, two, three, four, five. It's still one, three, five trimethylbenzene. So the fact that this thing is nice and symmetric explains why the numbering you can go clockwise or counterclockwise, and it doesn't matter. Um, by the way, some people are a little thrown by this H3C over here. This is just a function of, if you're drawing bonds going this way, you'd have a C with hydrogens coming off of it to the right, and it feels appropriate to call that CH3. If you have a carbon going the other direction with three hydrogens on it, and if you're used to English where you read everything from left to right, you see the hydrogens first in this case, and so there's a tendency to think of this as H3 and then a carbon. They're talking about the same thing. It's a methyl group either way. It's just they're trying to make an orientation that makes sense, where these hydrogens are off to the right, further away, and these hydrogens are off to the left, further away. So if you thought this was some kind of trap, it's not. OK, here. We have two branches coming off of this alkane in the middle, so it seems like this needs to be our primary. This contains one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons, which makes it octane. That chain is octane, and attached to it we have, these are benzenes, but when they're a branch off of something else, we don't call them benzenes, we call them phenyl groups. And there are two of them, so this is the first time we get to say diphenyl. This is a diphenyl octane, and the next part of the question is, where exactly are these two phenyls? Well, that's carbon number one, and that's two, and that's three, and that's four. So three and four each have a phenyl group on them. So this should be 3,4-diphenyl octane.